big and heavy. It must be good. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today we have a deck that I'm pretty excited about because it is my first contact with a Gustard deck. And by chance it is this newly released X18 that sells for around 750 US dollars which means it's not one of these dirty cheap budget decks and that also means that I expect quite a lot from it because at 750800 competition is really great so let's see what Gustard has to offer in that price category and the first thing that I can tell you about it is that it's really built nicely like a tank it's big heavy made completely out of aluminium that's thick and feels sturdy on the bottom you can see again aluminium feet here and that's really nice too it gives that feel of high quality high details a product because it's not just silicon bumps on the bottom but actual feet and made of aluminium now I'll quickly walk you through the connectivity part and I'll just put the picture on the screen because I'm too lazy to show everything because you have shitloads of digital inputs including coaxial, optical, USB, I squared S, AES and as you can see on the back too there are two types of analog outputs single-ended RCAs and balanced XLRs. I try most of these connections and I had no problems whatsoever. Why am I even mentioning this? Well, because somebody told me that he read somewhere on the web, I think probably Audio Science Review uh, Forum, that some people had problems with optical connectivity or when files switch from one sample rate to another sample rate, things like that. I did not experience any of these problems. Now I'll quickly turn it on to show you that in the front we have one display, I think it's OLED, and this wheel, it has clicky feeling, button in the middle of it, and one power button, and that's it basically. It's a really simple deck, it does have a preamp function so you can control the volume, as far as I've noticed, there is no like dedicated mode for preamp operation or DAC exclusive operation. If you use it as a DAC, you just crank the volume all the way to 0 dB attenuation. That means that you get full line level signal on outputs. And if you want to use it as a preamp, just start controlling the volume and that's it. Remote control is made out of plastic, but it's really nice. I like this sort of made finish. It has clicky quality to it. I never wonder if I pressed something or not. And that would be it. Oh yeah, also about the display. As you can see, it's quite small. And it's not a problem if you're using it in a desktop environment. And even in a room setup, it's not a problem to see volume level. So I can see that comfortably sitting in my couch some 10 feet around 3 meters away from a DAC. But once you enter a menu, that's main menu and one and only menu actually, everything is really really small on the screen but to be perfectly honest here i don't find that to be a big problem because all the things that you do in the menu are usually things that you tinker with in the beginning when you buy this deck so you choose digital filter or choose screen brightness or do you want it to turn off automatically I think I left that engaged by the way, yeah, while I was speaking, display went off. So you set it the way you want it and after that you just keep changing volume if you need that or changing inputs and that's quite okay. You can use that with a remote quite comfortably even if you're not sitting right in front of the deck. And finally, just a little bit about DAC construction, because as you probably already know, I don't focus on those things here on this channel. 
But I just wanted to mention that this DAC is based around one of the Sabre DAC chips and power supply is located inside the unit and Gustard claims it's a linear power supply, which is great because those are low noise. And you can also confirm basically that it is linear power supply by its weight and also you can see this screw here on the bottom. These kind of big screws that you can see on the bottom of the units are usually used to screw in a big transformer inside. Okay, so all of that out of the way, how does Gustard actually sound? Well, to put it simply, it sounds highly neutral and very resolving. That would be two of its most prominent traits. Now, when I say very neutral, I mean that no part of the spectrum feels to be emphasized, at least to my ears. Baseline is weighty enough, but it's not warm in any way. It's not elevated or emphasized. But it's not lean or lacking either. So when there is bass in the recording, you'll hear it. For example, in this song, there is a rich, nice, full bass line throughout all the track and Gustard here presents it with really great authority, great depth and absolutely great control. So as I mentioned, there is no elevating or emphasizing or any kind of warmth added to the bass line. It's just quick, resolving but deep and authoritative bass when it needs to be deep and authoritative. Now move to the rest of the spectrum and this goes for both mid-range and highest part, we get really highly resolving sound and that especially goes for edges of a tone. They're clear and crisp and Everything that's going on in the recording is so clearly outlined and placed in space. So, as you can imagine, when you have clearly outlined edges of everything, separation between instruments and vocals is absolutely great. And they never feel that tones clutter with each other, or that any tone is obscuring another tone. And that can happen with some decks. For example, if you at the same time have two, let's say, bass-heavy instruments. One can be double bass, put here, just slightly off-center. And then, quite close to it, imagine having a bass guitar. And those two playing simultaneously. If you have a DAC that is not as resolving and as crisp with those edges and that maybe emphasizes a little bit of the upper bass to make everything sound warmer and lusher, those two will start to haze and spill out of their positions. And eventually, sometimes when both of these players are playing similar notes, they start to melt and get fuzzy and you'll not be completely clear which player is doing what. With Gustard here, that's never a problem. As I said, it's really highly controlled, highly precise sounding deck. If you have two musicians standing closely to each other, at all times they'll continue sounding as two musicians standing close to each other and everyone is playing their own tones, their own tune and you can clearly like look at your speakers and listen to those two musicians separately. So to put it in other words, X18 here sounds quick and nimble, it separates well and it has great clarity and in that regard, this is one of the best decks that I've ever heard. Now, when it comes to the sound staging, things are good. They're not class leading, but they're good. You have quite reasonably wide sound stage. And there are very few decks on the market that can spread sound stage even wider than this. And those are mainly like R2R decks. 
So if we are talking about these Delta Sigma decks, especially Saber decks, I feel that this is as wide sounding deck as it gets. But when we start talking about soundstage depth and that whole virtual space thing, it does not do that particularly good. Talking about that part, about that three-dimensionality of the soundstage, it cannot match the best in class, such as Dana Fripps RS2 or something like Chord Cutist, which does that really, really great. But in isolation, you don't miss anything. It's a really wide, spacious sounding deck, especially if you're coming from something more affordable. If you're upgrading from something budget oriented, like, I don't know, topping E30 or topping E50. And even like the best 400 US dollars decks, like SMSL SU9 or topping D30 Pro, things like that, none of these sound as wide and as tall as Gustard here. It's only when you compare it to the best pricier decks that you realize that this is not the most spacious sounding one. But there are things that Gustard decks 18 is doing like top notch. And that's overall clarity and cleanliness of tone. It's dead neutral. I, 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 no matter how long I listen to it, it never feels like it's emphasizing any part of the spectrum. If you want warmth, look for it elsewhere. But that doesn't mean that it's overly edgy and sharp sounding deck, because it's not. It's clean, it's clear, and high frequencies are really well extended. You can hear a lot of spatial cues, a lot of air from the recording. There is empty space around the instruments. When microphones turn on, you hear that background there. When they turn off, you hear darkness because Gustard X18 is also capable of producing really decent background darkness. And that's also a part of the reason why everything sounds so clean and clear. So it is highly resolving, positively analytical. And I say positively because with that analytical and resolving character, you don't get any of the nasties that sometimes go with it. Because it does sound smooth. It does sound mature. It's just neutral. And if you want something that will give you a little bit of, I don't know, mid-bass boost or some sort of euphonic big sound stage and things like that, Gustard is simply not doing that with this product. And now let's enter comparisons. So I'll first start by saying that I'll skip most of the more affordable decks because no matter what you compare it with, is that like really great SMSL D300 that I recently reviewed or topping D30 Pro or topping E50, things like that. X18 will beat them in most of the categories. While some of those decks will sound tonally different, with which you might prefer, but X18 will sound more detailed, airier, more spacious, better control in the bass region, and just more extended in both bass section and highest registers. It has deep bass, well extended and highly detailed highs. And as I mentioned, it doesn't come with any nasties that you might have heard with some cheap saber offerings that can sound a little bit too sharp and a, a little bit digital. That does not happen here. Just one example. If you would record a glass and a spoon just hitting each other and you have that tsing type of sound. And if you do that on a really, really good budget deck, you would hear that really clearly, but there would be some sort of a little bit of harshness and graininess in that sound. It would not sound as liquid as hitting a glass in real life sounds. But with all clarity and all edge crispiness and 
positive analytical sound that I mentioned with Gustar Dax 18, when you actually ask it to reproduce such sound, it sounds smoother and more liquid. Glass sounds more like glass. So in my mind, that is the first step any really good deck must make. It must be better than significantly cheaper decks. And this one is. That out of the way, let's compare it to something that actually has a chance of standing against Gustard X18. So first of them, Yermen Tradutto, that I've recently reviewed, I really loved it. And I said that Tradutto has a really punchy, kicky, full bass line, and that stands true in comparison with X18 here also. Meaning that Tradutto sounds fuller and more muscular, and a lot of that comes from this really punchy and kicky bass line. And as I mentioned just earlier in this video, X18 is not doing that. It's offering you a highly detailed and highly controlled bass line. So here you get that speedier, quicker, even more nimble bass line, but at the cost of some kick and slam and punch that Traduto has. When it comes to the rest of the spectrum, I feel that uh, Gustard here offers slightly more forward sounding mid-range. And because of that, small details like, I don't know, singer opening her lips or a player like just touching strings on the instrument or putting finger on the top of his guitar, things like that, will be more easily heard through Gustard. Those same details are, again, quite observable with Irmen Tradutto, but they are just a little bit laid, more laid back, while Gustard puts that in front. And it, it lays those details bare in front of you. And finally, if we are talking about the sound stage, both of these decks have quite similar sound stage width, but I feel that Yermen Traduto offers a little bit more depth. And that goes with that part, uh, where some mid-range tones are a little bit toned down and laid back. And that sounds like, spatially, some musicians in some tones are a little bit more relaxed in the back of the recording, whereas Gustard puts everything a little bit up front. And it doubles down on that edge crispiness, edge clarity. To be perfectly honest here, choosing which one is better is almost impossible. But because I don't want to be one of these politically, socially, snowflakey, correct reviewer that never wants to reveal his own tastes, for the sake of all that correctness, I'll just say, I would probably, in my own system, with my own cafe LS 50s that are smallish speakers, very analytical, I would probably rather use Irman Tradutto, because it gives me that additional punch and kick, and that slightly laid-back mid-range and a lot of spaciousness, while at the same time keeping a lot of details and palpability. On the other hand, Gustard X18 is probably more neutral sounding deck, if you think in terms of frequency spectrum. It probably has even more clarity and cleanliness with its tones and separation of everything. And I can definitely imagine having slightly different hi-fi setup here with some bigger, more fatty, juicy sounding speakers where qualities of Gustard would mean more than qualities of Irman Tradutto. And that's really something that when you have quite a bit of mileage behind you in this hobby, you know that that's true. And when two products are so closely matched in quality, personal taste and the rest of your system can determine which one you like more. Now, moving to the next comparison, that is Dana Fripp's RS2, my long-term favorite, it's R2R deck, costing currently actually price of it increased to 800, maybe even 40, something like that US dollars, it's R2R deck, and it does sound 
tonally richer, like mid-range especially feels like having fuller tone timbre. Everything is a little bit richer and more palpable in space. But tones are also a little less clear, and I want to say hazier. And there is bigger chance that if you have a lot of things going on right next to each other, Gustard X18 will present that with more clarity and better separation. Where RS2 will actually shine when you need to add some body and some natural weight to those instruments, but you don't care as much about pinpointing them and keeping every tone inside of its firm, sharp boundaries. Because RS2 will haze edges a little bit, but in return it will offer a slightly wider soundstage, deeper soundstage, more like 3D feeling, but as I mentioned with slightly hazier, fluffier tones. That difference is especially true when it comes to the mid-bass. Mid-bass sounds fuller but more bloated with RS2, whereas it's leaner, meaner, and more controlled with Gustard X18. Once again, I know this must be really annoying, but it's really difficult to tell which one is better because truly speaking, neither is better. They are just really, really good decks where each of those excel in some things, but it's not as good as the other one in some other things. If you're like, but why? Why can't I have both? Well, you probably can, but not at this price point. Because both X18 and RS2 are among the cheapest decks that these two manufacturers produce. Actually, RS2 is the cheapest Danafrips deck, while X18 is not exactly the cheapest one, but it's close to that. And I suppose that once you go to more and more and more expensive decks in both of these lines, they actually start to converge towards each other. I can imagine that more expensive Denafrips offer more resolution and more edge clarity, whereas more expensive Gustards offer more tone timbre and fullness and three-dimensionality. It's just the way it goes. Every manufacturer starts climbing the pyramid of high fidelity from different points. And the closer you get to the top, more of the similar qualities they start to get. Lower you are on the pyramid, you get more compromises with one brand prioritizing some things while other brand prioritizing other things. They do really strive to do the same thing to sound like reality on that unattainable top of the pyramid, but they're approaching it from the different sides. And finally, because I know a lot of you will ask me this, how does it compare to topping D90S, E or D70S? Well, I never heard topping D90, but I did test topping D70S. And all I can tell you, because there is a reasonable time gap between the time I actually tested D70S and this Gustard, is that tonally they're quite similar. Just like this Gustar, the D70S had this quite neutral sound, but not too sharp, not digital sounding. But going by my memory, I do remember that D70S was just slightly bit fuller in the bass and mid bass, while not as clear and controlled and crisp as Gustar here. So I would say that X18 is even more neutral and it's even more like precise tool from just passing the signal from the input to the output. And it is a little bit more resolving if you have the rest of the system that can actually show that. Because if not, you might not notice that because all of these decks are quite, quite good. But that said, I have to say that Gustar DAX 18 is a pretty darn good neutral sounding deck that does not emphasize anything, 
it does not have any obvious shortcomings. It's at the same time analytically detailed, but not digital sharp or tiring in any way. It has smoothness, it has liquidity to it, but it is highly detailed lean sounding deck. If that's not something that would match in your system, think twice before purchasing it. But if you do like that, if you, if you want that quality in your system, it's definitely one of the best highly detailed, highly resolving decks that really doesn't imprint almost any of its own sound signature to the overall sound. So in the end, I guess there's really little to complain about Gustar X18. It's a highly resolving, highly neutral sounding deck. And if that's your thing, there is nothing stopping you from recommending it to you. And that would be all for today, guys. Now, if you like this video, then click that button. Also ring that notification bell to get all of my latest videos as soon as they come out. And consider becoming a patron that really helps the channel grow, stay independent, honest, unbiased, etc, etc. And thank you again for being here. See you next time. Bye. <music>